Welcome everyone. Uh, this is a little bit different kind of setup for my random text fantasies and sci-fi podcast. Um, I will say it again like a video podcast in a way and it will be on YouTube. So today I like to talk with you about the first episode of Star Trek Picard. Uh, season one, Doobidoo, I mean. <laughs> so everyone who doesn't have seen the episode or don't want to have spoilers, spoiler alert! So if you don't want to hear it, stop right away and watch it when you have watched this episode. Well, it's a new beginning, it's a new season. I'm very excited about it and I loved this premiere episode of season two. I really loved it. I have heard some noises in the Star Trek community about they don't like it, but I think maybe that is because it is total different Star Trek, uh, very discovery-like, but also um, um, it's very fast. And that's what I had also with, when I started the first with Discovery, I had that feeling too. I couldn't ground it. It took me a little while and I watched the seasons a couple of times to, uh, when I could say, okay, this is Star Trek. So the first episode called Star uh, The Stargazer. You can interpret that for two, in two ways. The Stargazer as in the first ever um, command ship of Picard and it's also in sample of this episode so we see the new refit of the Stargazer with of course and I was a very uh, surprised by that command by Rios and but the other way is or point is um, it could also as Picard being a stargazer. He always looked at the stars, he always wanted to go to stars to explore, etc, etc, etc. So it can be have two meanings. And there's a lot of emotions, a lot of being said and being told in this episode. And I of why people don't like it and I, I like it. So s let's start with Laris. So we see Laris at the cart in the vineyard and, and a new uh, wine is coming out um, but you see those gazes between Laris and Picard and Later on the patio, when they bring some wine, um, they saw one another in different languages, what was very funny. And at the end, Picard says, I'll uh, salute big ears, which make me giggle because, of course, the broken and woman ears are bigger than humans. So that one was very um, funny but there are also a little hint of Laris and Picard romantic and for me that was a little shock and they almost kissed and I wish they had kissed but okay they didn't kiss but almost and you could see both longing but Picard was scared and Laris was, I think she is a little bit of sick of waiting of him. So then she mentioned him, okay, you need to go hurry up. You have a speech tomorrow on the academy for a new cadets. And who is also becoming a cadet? Eleanor and that was fun 
something I was really, really surprised by because I never thought Alvin Noah would join Starface. And by the way, perhaps because it was a way for him to experience more in life. And it was so funny that Rocky said that, that like, um, that boy is absolute combo, but he's going to kick his ass. Because he doesn't have experience other than the Roman Empire he had with the card mullet. And that was quite surprising for me. So, him being a full-blown Romulan joining Starfy, that's the first one ever. Um, kind of a special, I guess. Very special. Um, so we also already have a little bit talked about Rocky. Love Rocky. Still named of She and uh, Seven have something together and in one way that's a little bit weird because um, those two characters are known for being straight so I think this is something like a following up of like what they are doing in Discovery and I don't mind I have no issues with it let me be clear but um, it was very noticing of okay they have to do something with it and of course we had a little hint already in the last episode of Picard when Rafi and Seven hold hands and that was exciting but Okay, I don't know how they want to go further with this because in the first season we saw Rafi trying to get her life together and going back and visit his son and her son doesn't want to do something with her, etc, etc, etc. And, um, you know, it's... Um, so, it looks like that she is having a new chapter in her life and go further with her life. And that was one thing I, 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 she was already Picard's first companion. Now she's on the Excelsior, together with Elmore, and what I really love is that they, Seven and Rafi really took Elmore under their wings, and I really like that. So, Rafi is again a first officer on the Excelsior, but why, why is she not a captain? I thought with everything she has done and her knowledge, she would be having her own ship. What do you guys think about that? Cause I like to know, yeah. What I say, everything when I'm speaking in this episode, you can comment uh, in the comments below on YouTube or on the Facebook group. So let's talk about it. Um, talking about Seven. Seven is taking care of three other ships. Well, actually, it's her ship, and it was very funny how we also reacted on how Seven, uh, what the Seven did with his ship. So, more or less, the S La Serena is uh, looking a lot different, with a little bit of dance she said, doing good, working for the Furnace, of course, Furnace Rangers. And I don't know, I, I, I had the feeling that she is still mad and angry and bored and she's 
she still wants to kick ass and she is very um on alert on things it's happening and that's why she can't join Starfleet anymore of course she haven't left or you need to join Starfleet but okay and that's why I want to mention to say too if I remember it, Seven and Rocky were always being straight they always had men in their lives why are they looking for a female now and why is that happening all of them are bisexual but okay um I forgot something I forgot something okay <laughs> um there's something else they have been saying there will be four ships in the first episode of Picard that already know are ships from Star Trek Online. And I know a lot of Star uh, Star players um, are l hysterical and excited about that. Also, I saw um, from Eagle Moss, all the Picard ships are with, I thought, 20% discount now. And... Um, it's really, really uh, nice to see that uh, this is happening, and you know, um, I hope, and I really, ho I always have said that. I hope they will do something more with Picard in Star Trek Online. That would be nice. I hope maybe an an, an timeline with episodes of. And count on the bark again or whatever. That would be fun. There's also, and I really do like this, although um, it's driving me nuts. And I think you already have uh, seen that what I um, I told you before. It drives me nuts in how much they change the uniforms. Although I must say I like this uniform, what they're wearing now. And in one way, I can understand that because they're moving forward and they're so combining, solving other patterns of other series of the uniform series. So, why not? Um, but did you notice that Picard also have wearing a lot of different kind of combats, and also that drives me crazy. But okay, it's Star Trek. Um. Let me see. So... I must say... Picard is looking fitter than he had in the last couple of episodes. And I quite like that, in a way. And... I still don't know what I have to think about this um, Picard being a synth. It's really, I don't know, it's, it's, in one way it's great, but on the other hand, yeah, I don't know, how, how, how are people moving with that? And I think only maybe some people, certain people know that Picard is a synth. But yeah, I don't know. I still, I still, I have mixed feelings about it. I don't know what your feelings are about it. So um, let me know. Could be interesting. And um, it's really I think they are making very great leaps now and I don't know if if and that's what I was was scared of before uh, beginning into this season is that it would be so much messed up 
with the timelines and of course the uh, time traveling shenanigans I was very scared that it would be a flop that it wouldn't work but of course bringing Q back in Gaiman it might work and once again I love 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 this episode I it was better than I expected uh, a lot of old characters that are coming back like like I said Q and, and Guinan well let's talk about Guinan first um, loved it I'm not a big fan of Whoopi anymore because in what kind of a things she said about certain periods of history um, but as Guinan as a character I loved her and especially when she is just the old Guinan we know but I do think she's like older mature like that and how she talks to Picard is like also like an advisor even different like Troy would do and I always had that with Guinan Guinan is always somebody who uh, has more wisdom, has more experience, has is so different than Diana, Troy. So that was very nice to see. And she, and once again, there was a lot of emotions in this episode. She told Picard, okay, you have done, 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 done this, but you are running away. And if I remember correctly, and if I saw it correctly, there was uh, there was a deep, that deep com conversation on the patio with Laris, and also she said the same. But there was also a younger star, uh, a younger Laris, in the begin of thing of the episode when. They were on Stargazer, and first it was like Stargazer on of Picard, but like you could see soon it was from the new refit. Although, let me say this: I love the new Stargazer. I really do. I love the refit of it, and the bridge is awesome, really awesome. And the captain's chair. Well, that's almost like the gaming chair. Uh, my partner Spoon will uh, order. It's like a gaming chair uh, with Star Trek on it. It's really cool and the logo, the emblems, etc. So it's similar like that and I really love it. What do was weird was is that Agnes was on Stargaze as a, I don't know what, but uh, some kind. And, and, and in one way, she was like a uh, advisor, like Counselor Troy. But what really annoyed me, and I have no idea what your reaction on is on here, is why is Agnes drinking this much? And she's drunk on the bridge, and I was thinking, what the heck, you know? Why? Wouldn't she be more uh, sober and into the lines? But I must say I like her outfit. Let's say that I like her outfit. Um, um I always have that. Um, Okay, yeah, we're on, there was a moment that we are on De La Salvena and S Seven would be entered by pirates. They want mass supply or whatever else more and she was finding them 
and then she healed the uh, emergency holograms and one is wheels of course but it was so funny so funny really are and the only thing is why and of course we have that universal translator of course but um it's so funny that the holograms are speaking still spanish and seven could understand them because of the translators of course but it's still um weird because normally when another species talk is always english because it's already translated i must say the character of the holograms are very funny i always love them in, in in one way or another and of course the different kind of accents and where they coming from originally so but i think that hologram and seven could be very good mates because they are similar and 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 that's what it was i think the big surprise and shock is that you would think okay a lot of the whole crew that Picard had in season one will be in season two as well as the La Serena crew but that wasn't so just seven on that ship and helping all the people out etc so um although it was refreshing I loved it and of course uh, after the last episode of season one everything could be happening like now also they are having a lot of uh, adventures and, and, and things to do and things to cover so I'm very excited what they are going to do and um, I must agree with some of the fans the episode was very fast a lot of things had happened in a short period but maybe this was also the hang on episode pre-episode for the whole storyline in season two so who knows um so um Seven find Rios with Stargazer, of course, and um, of course, very funny conversation. But then she showed the board ship, the new board ship. And I remember when I, when uh, I was, was watching it with my partner Simon, and Simon was really saying, What? the heck is that that looks bored so it appears to be bored and it is it looks different very different in the way of the borgs as we know we when we talk about borgs like cubies and very uh you know this borg ship reminds me of the ship of nero in um i thought it was the first movie of jj abrams yeah not nemesis no no nemesis 2. it's look up a bit like that and i don't know what to think of it i don't know what to think about this whole going to enter the federation thing with the borg and um so rios and pick um uh, seven meet they found out the wave what they are saying and they were uh, similar about 12 languages that are speaking one sentence and Jurati 
is finding out what it says and it says help us Picard so Starfleet was calling up on Picard and says well this and this and this is the situation we want you to go in person and go find out Picard uh, was on the way his on the way to the bridge and he met Seven on the turbo lift and that was very surprising you could see his oh hi it's you and um, it was a very great reunion and you could see Picard was more or less home and said this is like the old stargazer of mine and he really loved the ship and especially the bridge and that was very nice to see too and I never thought too that Rios would um, join Starfleet again after everything would happened so that was a surprise for me too so there was one thing I forgot to mention um, when we are having the graduation of all the cadets on Starfleet Academy and Picard spoke Picard said goodbye to Elnor and he gave him a book that Spock wrote and I think that was a beautiful tribute to Leonard Nimoy as we know him and it is very good to see how uh, Elnor will be struggling with the things between Starfleet, human being, and Romulan. So to have Spock's memoirs with all the writing of him and experience of him, how he cope had to cope with his human feelings, but also with his Vulcan feelings, feelings I think that would help um, Elmer very much I don't know what you guys think about it but um, I think it will be okay mm. what I do also love about Picard um, visiting Guinenberg is that I think it was on a place that he knew and I love Guinan's outfit it's similar as in TNG and what I also like is that they don't um, have uh, she doesn't have that big hat of hers anymore um what do funny is is that she still runs a bar <laughs> and you know with her knowledge maybe i was thinking maybe she sh she would help starfleet as well but okay there was another thing i really like about this new episode is that they shut the pots had been renewed and i really like those i really love those they have a similar kind of a, a female touch female roundings and that's what i like it, it reminds me a lot of um captain's yard and also like uh the dot 23 i love those the dot 23 so I think they can do more about it and I'm, I'm, I'm in, in a one way I think the developers will use this also this series also and we know that already maybe but especially from the second season is that they make it like a uh, future thingy although of course Picard is going back to the future but who knows we have to see and watch what will be coming of the whole series and um 
Sir Patrick has uh, confirmed that there will be only three seasons of Picard. So um, that is also his legacy of Star for Star Trek and of Star Trek. And now I'm getting emotional because um, thinking of this will be this will be his last appearance in like series and being in Star Trek um, that's hard for me because uh, like I said before and told you before I started with Star Trek TNG when it was when it aired well we were not airing airing and I was hooked right away and so I hope and this is for you Sir Patrick I hope sincerely that you will make an exception and lend your voice to Star Trek Online to keep that legacy. And I know you kind of hate it, but I would love to hear your voice in Star Trek Online. And like I said, I hope that they make some kind of a timeline with, for example, Rocky, Eleanor, Picard, uh, Dr. Soon, how, who knows what. And um, I hope you lend your voice for that because that would be extremely awesome. Um, Picard is my first captain, Star Trek captain. He is not my favorite, but he still has a big place in my heart because he is my first Star Trek captain and I don't know if you guys already have seen the wedding room about this episode um, the funny part was Will Wheaton was uh, interviewing Sir Patrick and before they started they had a before shot and you could see that he was nervous. And I was thinking, Will, why are you nervous? You know Sir Patrick for so long. But maybe he's still feeling like he is that little boy Wesley on the bridge. And I must say, um, really honored to wear this uniform. Every uni Star Trek uniform I wear, I'm very honored and very um, proud of wearing it. Um, coming back to the uniform, I love the uniforms they wear right now. So um, who knows? Um, there was two characters we still need to talk about and that is one the board queen thank you the board queen was very interesting because he was totally different than that we than that we know from before or in star trek games and the first my first impression of how she looked like was like, okay, she looks like when Giorgio was in section 31. She has the same cape, same thingy. She looks a little bit the same. But also, you remember that episode from TNG with the um, uh, black alien that was uh, captured and kidnapped? Um, Troy on that planet, the black terror massa, and later on he killed Chachiar. Now, well, that's the uh, she looked like that, and the bullet, of course, the bullet. How can I forget that? It's 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 a mixture of it. 
Um, what I didn't understand, and maybe you guys can have your own theory theories about it. I didn't understand why the War Queen attack the Stargazer in having energy at first and want to cr control the whole ship and the whole fleet or the Yamada like Seven said and I don't know if you guys notice it but Seven is really on edge, very emotional because she like one in that conversation with uh, when they had a conversation in the briefing room and I must say <laughs> it was really funny how um, Rios talked but Seven was very very um, disengaged and sad you can't let her take over she will do that they will do this you know how Borg are you know they will assimilate they only want to be assimilated etc 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 I think that there's some kind of a trauma she has because she is going human again so that probably it will be and um I don't know. I don't know why. Um, maybe I didn't catch it. And you do. But what would be the reason the Borg Queen attack like that and need power like that? I, although I can't remember the, of course, um, in that episode with you, that you also needed that energy, so who knows? Sure thing. <coughs> and at last, of course, we got Q. First, of course, a very young Q. And then he said to Picard, Oh, you have been older than I thought. Let me catch up with you and he snapped his finger and he became old and of course we in fans we already knew that it was hinted that Q will be back but that was a great entrance of Q really it was a really great entrance and you know um I think we will see more of him in this season and probably in season three as well so who knows what shenanigan uh, Picard will have to endure again although I had my own theory of uh, maybe because of kill cam will change Picard back to human but there are other theories that won't, so, um, okay. Um, funny part also was is that he still bugger Picard with, Oh, Mon Capitan, Mon Capitan, I missed you. And also he reminded Picard that the end never, the trial never ends. So, who knows what we're going to and or and what we can expect in the next few episodes i have no idea it's completely open um i must say i'm very very i i loved it it was very emotional even for me i cried i cried a lot because of uh the shenanigans uh the like, movie of uh yeah Guinan and Q back, but also as in moving forward and um, in how Picard's develop. I mean, as series, not as. Yeah! Also as Picard as a human being. 
wel sind. So, and I mentioned forgetting, forget mentioning that, we see of course also uh, Soji with a group of sin that it's been a year, etc, etc. And um, so this first episode is already a year further than the last episode. There's one thing I hope. I'm not for sure, but there's one thing I hope that we see still uh, Riker, Troy, and Kestra back. I love Kestra. So, who knows? Maybe Kestra is no, can't be after a year. No, <laughs> she can't be grown up. <laughs> but okay. Um, yeah, that is one thing I still hope because I really love that dynamic. Dynamic. Um, so, this is the episode, a new episode of Orlando Talks Fantasy and Sci-Fi with a new up, uh, setup. So, guys, tell me what you think. What do you think of the episode and what you think of uh, what happened now? And uh, like I said, comment in below in the YouTube channel or in the Facebook group. I love to hear what your opinion is and how you uh, experienced it. And I probably see you soon with another episode recap or review because I think we have a lot of talk about that. So, too. I would say, don't hurt. I live long and prosper.